Hey guys! In today's episode of Arjuna Thursday, we're going to paint the northern light above a beautiful snow scenery as so many of you guys requested it. Now to create the bright green shades, I'm going to use a lemon yellow, phthalo blue, and titanium white. Start off by mixing a few different shades of green. Here I first mixed the blue with the white paint and then added as much yellow as I needed to the mixture until I was happy with the shade. As you can see, the more lemon yellow I add, the more greenish the blue shade becomes and that's what you want. And next to it, I also mix a shade that is even more greenish using the first mixed color and even more yellow. And then use the second mixed color and added even more white paint to the mixture to make it super bright. Now we have these three beautiful green shades for now. If you want to, you can sketch out a few lines for yourself so you know how you want the movement of the northern light to be and then we can go ahead and start painting. For the whole process, I'm going to use flat brushes. Now I'm going to start off with the lightest shade first and apply it to the areas where I want the brightest areas of the northern light to be to create the base. Next I took the lime green color and applied it on top and blended it in. Since I still wanted to make it even more vibrant, I mixed in a little bit more of the lemon yellow color and applied it to the lowest part of the light to make it as shiny as possible. I also added a little bit of white paint on top to see how it will look together. You will see throughout the process that I keep going back and forth because I always feel like sometimes it just needs time until you figure out how to make the painting look best. So don't worry if you are not happy with the way it looks yet, just keep working on it. Acrylic paint dries rather quickly so you can always just paint over and adjust things. While the light is drying, we can work on the dark parts of the sky. Here I mixed ultramarine with a dark red color together and use a little bit of the phthalo blue during the process. We just want to create a dark area on the left and a dark blue color moving towards the light. To just fill in the space with paint, you can add a little bit of water to your brush if it's easier for you to distribute the paint, but if you want to blend in the paint into the green light, I would recommend to wipe off any excess water and rather use a dry brush and just a little bit of paint. Here I like doing that because this way you can use the texture of the paper or canvas to create really nice effects. So here you can distribute the paint and when you notice that you don't have enough paint on the brush, you can use the rest to slightly blend it in into the green light. This is just the base that we can work on more later. For now, let it dry and let's paint the snow below the sky. To create the shade for the snow, I'm going to mix some alizarin crimson hue, ultramarine and lots of white paint. If you don't have the exact red shade, look for a red shade that you have that is biased slightly more towards purple than towards orange on the color wheel. I added a little bit more white paint to the mixture to make it even softer and we get this beautiful pale lavender color. This is going to be the base for the snow so just load up your brush with paint and distribute it all over the white area below the sky. I also mixed in this color into the lower part of the sky to create this misty bright area far far away. Once the paint is dried, we can go back to the northern light and work on it more. Now here you want to load up your brush with the green shade and then move the paint upwards starting from the lower part of each light. Now here it's important that your brush is rather dry and has a little paint left on the brush when you blend the paint upwards into the blue sky. If you have too much paint, you will just create a thick line of paint. And we want to feather out the paint into thin lines like here. This might take some practice if you are totally new to this technique. I also used the leftover paint on the brush to add even more lines below the big green areas to add even more light to the sky because I felt like the blue area looked too empty. And if you use too much green paint, don't worry. You can always load up your brush with a blue color and then add the paint the same way but this time downwards. So this way you kind of even out the light. Here again, keep the brush dry and with just a little bit of paint to avoid thick brush strokes. 
As you can see here, I also went back and forth, added more green colors, added more blue, and just moved the paint around until I was happy with the way the paint was blended. I think I imagined it a little bit differently because I originally wanted the light to have a different shape, but I think for the first attempt, it's not that bad. At least I learned how to achieve all these beautiful colors and got to practice blending them. So don't worry if it takes time for you to figure it out. I also need some practice because I haven't really painted such skies yet, but I really want to practice more and get better and better each time. So once the paint has dried, you can add the trees. For this step, load up your brush with any dark color you have on your mixing palette, hold the flat brush with the white side horizontally, and then get into the Bob Rouse modus and start dabbing on the paint from the left to the right while leaving out a little bit of space in between. Repeat the step with the other trees in the background. Here I just randomly dabbed on the paint while making sure I create different heights. And this is how it looks now. A little bit messy but we will make it shine a little bit later once the paint has dried. In the meantime, let's go back to the snow area because we have some shadows to add. Here I simply used the same shade that I mixed for the snow earlier and added a little bit of the dark paint from a mixing palette to make the shade slightly darker. Now all we need to do is to apply the paint diagonally for the shadows as the brightest part of the northern light is right behind the big tree. So here I used the flat brush to apply the paint while mixing up the thick with the thin side of the brush to create different sizes. Once the trees have dried, we can add some snow on top of them as well. Here load up your flat brush with the same shade as we used for the snow earlier and dab on the paint the same way as we created the trees, just here leave out some of the dark colors in between. Now let's remove the tape and add a few last details. If you don't have a thin brush, you can use a paper clip and dip the tip into the white paint and use it as a dotting tool to apply a few stars to the sky here and there. This will add a really nice atmosphere to the painting. I really hope you like it. Let me know in the comments what we should paint next. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other acrylic painting videos right here. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!